on April 22nd, 2006. At the time, I was a private first class. Um, I'm a little bit different. I'm a military police officer, so we don't have the straight combat role. We do a little bit of everything. But at the time, we were doing a, uh, a police station. We were checking on it, doing all the supplies for it, doing training and whatnot. We were sitting static at the checkpoint, uh, you know, talking to the different officers and whatnot. I just got back into my 1114, which is an up armored Humvee. And uh, the door was still open, and uh, my gunner was up on top. And my, I was a driver, and my medic was outside, just walked up, and he was sitting on the passenger side with the door open. And uh, he asked me a question, and the next thing I know, there was a, a car come through, and uh, it had about 500 pounds worth of explosives in it and blew up beside my truck. I guess it was surreal, so I, you know, I checked myself, make sure everything was good, and I wasn't bleeding, I was still alive. Um, smoke everywhere. I got my senses, got out of the truck. Went around the backside and I saw my medic laying there, you know, just a bloody heap. My gunner was just a frantic mess. He thought he blew his hand off. Um, he was trying to get out of the truck, so I cut him loose with a gunner restraint system and uh, made sure my medic was still alive. He was, just coughing, just bloody mess. Uh, I tried to stand him up, he couldn't walk. He said his legs were broken. So uh, we drug him back under small arms fire, RPGs and mortars to a, uh, their checkpoint. At that time, their, uh, the Iraqi police already left, so I. I told my gunner to stay there, and I bounded back up to my truck to check on the other trucks. Um, we had an ASV, which was up in the center of the park, or in the uh, intersection, completely out of commission, so I ran up to it. Um, I downloaded the three personnel out of it. Um, while under fire and RPGs and mortars, there was a oil tank beside the truck that exploded, um, let oil down to another truck that was providing rear security that only had a gunner in it. Um, so I evacuated all three of the people out of the ASV. They were all semi-conscious, you know, rattled, didn't what happened, so I escorted them back down there under fire, and then uh, across fire and smoke and gunfire, I ran over to the other 1114 and uh, got inside the truck, turned it around, and drove up the intersection so that gunner could lay down suppressive fire, and uh, went and treated the, uh, the casualties, and then loaded them on uh, strikers. My gunner had a uh, Two of his fingers had to be reattached, and then the medic, he laid in the hospital bed for about eight months. Had to get all kinds of shrapnel pulled out of him, his legs were in braces and everything like that, but all in all, everyone lived. Um, just a sad story to tell. Just looking around after the, after the fact and looking at all the gunshots and RPG blasts and everything and realizing, hey, I just ran through there. You know, I could have been laying there dead. Um, it came uh, surreal. I didn't want to sit there in a the corner and shut down. It's not what I was about. War can be hell. It's not like modern warfare, where you get shot at and it, it comes a little bloody. It's, there's real blood and guts. It's more about the, the guys that I was with and making sure that they made it back. Um, it took me a long time to cope with the fact of what I had just because of the personnel that had to leave. Um, you know, when I awarded it, I got awarded it like four months after the incident. And it took me a little while to realize full scope that I didn't have all my brothers there.